Welcome to a new 13 cubed series I'm going to call 13 cubed shorts. I thought about calling them quickies, but then a friend reminded me that may not be the best name choice. So let's stick with shorts. Basically, these episodes are going to be short and purpose-built to cover a singular topic from a high-level point of view. In this case, we're going to be talking about the article you see on screen. On the 18th of January, 2019, Tony Lambert, also known as Forensic IT Guy, published this article, Making Meterpreter Look Google Signed Using MSI and JAR Files. So what does that mean? Well, in short, Lambert explains how to take a legitimate signed copy of the Google Chrome Enterprise Installer and append a malicious meterpreter payload in Java Archive or JAR format to that MSI. The end result is that the malicious code will still have the original signature. In other words, it will still be validly signed by Google, and when the user runs it, the malicious payload will execute. Now, how is that possible, you ask? Well, the JAR file is going to be associated with Java, of course, and therefore it will not open with msiexec.exe, the Windows installer, as would an MSI file. Instead, when Java opens the JAR file, which is just a compressed zip file, like many programs that process zip files, it will begin reading from the end of the file to the beginning of the file until it finds the zip header, at which point it will stop, and then that is the code that will be executed. This means that the original MSI file will be completely ignored. But wait, that's not how digital signatures work, you say. Wouldn't the signature be invalidated since we're modifying the MSI file? Well, no, because an MSI file is actually a compound storage file. We've discussed these in other 13 cubed episodes, but this basically means that the file is composed of a series of OLE streams. The data that we are appending is external to those streams. And as such, the MSI file itself isn't really technically being modified which is why the signature is still valid. Now, obviously, if we tried that with a Windows Portable Executable format file, that would not be the case because any modification would immediately cause that signature to become invalid. Also, keep in mind, this doesn't just work with Google Chrome. This is just a proof of concept. It will work with any validly signed and trusted MSI file. So this is a big deal. This is made possible by an issue with the MSI file format first disclosed by VirusTotal in this article, Distribution of Malicious JAR Appended to MSI Files Signed by Third Parties, which is dated 15 January 2019. If you want all the gory details, I'll leave a link to both of these articles in this video's description. In the next section, we're going to see this in action. And just for fun, I installed Carbon Black Protection, which is one of the world's most popular and capable application whitelisting solutions, on the Victim VM, which is a Windows 10 machine, prior to running the payload, just to see what happens. I think you'll be surprised by the results, so let's take a look. Following along with the article, the first thing we need to do is use MSF Venom to generate our meterpreter payload in JAR format. So we'll specify dash P, of course, Java meterpreter reverse HTTPS for our shell. L host is going to be the IP address of this Kali box. The file type is JAR. And for the output, we're calling it meterpreter dash HTTPS dot JAR. We'll give that just a moment to cook and it's done. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and specify our handler. To do that, we'll fire up MSF console. And when it loads, we'll go ahead and specify the parameters for that handler. So it's going to be handler dash P. We'll use Java meterpreter reverse HTTPS dash capital H. And then we'll specify 0, .0, 0.0.0.0 to listen on all interfaces and then dash capital P 8443 for our port. And there we go. Now it's listening. Now let's go back up and open a new tab. And at this point, let's go ahead and concatenate our original valid Google MSI file along with the meterpreter jar file, and we'll output it to the same name, only changing the extension to .jar. 
Now we're done. And at this point, we're going to take that jar file over to our victim Windows 10 machine and see what happens. On the desktop, you'll see the original valid Google Chrome MSI file. And we'll go ahead and go to Digital Signatures and click on the details. And of course, as you would expect, the Digital Signature reports as OK. Now here's the file we just concatenated and created on the Kali box. We'll go to Digital Signatures here. We'll click Details. And there you go. The Digital Signature is OK. And that is indeed our malicious payload. So let's go ahead and close all of these windows and pretend like we're a unsuspecting user that has been enticed to click this. We'll go ahead and click it. And at this point, we should now have a reverse shell. If we go back to our Kali box, there it is, session two opened, and we are now in. Now the interesting thing is, what if we look at Carbon Black? If we switch over to it, you'll notice that it does see this file appearing on the desktop. It shows it as an approved file by publisher because as in many environments, we have decided in this case to whitelist anything that's validly signed by Google. Now, obviously a lot of corporations would do this for Google, Microsoft, or any other large publishers that you inherently trust. Another thing to mention is on this particular Windows 10 victim VM, I do have Windows Defender currently turned off. I can tell you that System Center Endpoint Protection does detect this, other AV may or may not, but obviously, if you're a pen tester watching this, you know that it's fairly trivial to evade AV detection. There are many ways to do that that are beyond the scope of this video. But just keep in mind that a defense in depth approach would be very, very wise to have at this point. Unfortunately, at this time, Carbon Black does not seem to detect anything as being wrong with this. Of course, neither does Windows. Windows sees it as a perfectly valid signed file. And again, we covered why that is in the first section of the video. So I hope this introductory 13 cubed short has been informative and I'll catch you in the next one.